my mom always have me one notebook for drawing or whatever. Oh, we, wow. we call it not drawing book. It's like uh, if you translate it, it will be uh, draw and fun. It's like you you just scratch mm. anything for fun. So that's the book name for it. We have the name for it in Lao. Well, what's the name? Sure if, what's the name in Lao? Pum uh, Tam Lin. <laughs> oh yeah, boom, boom is like book with Tamlin is like to play, like, yeah, to play, yeah. To have <laughs> yeah, I always have that one book. My my parents always have that one book for me. Or since I start, yeah. Welcome, guys, to another episode of the Fox and Burger Podcast, where we bring you closer to the Asian side of the furry fandom, one episode at a time. I'm your co-host, Michael the Matcha Fox, and I'm Burger. And today, we have another first with our guest Defago, an artist from Laos. In this episode, we took a look at the influences and unique features of Defago's amazing artwork. We also discussed the Laos furry community and compared it to other Southeast Asian fandoms. Finally, we talked about the future of Laos and, like Vietnam, if Laos will be due for a furcon or large-scale meetup in the next few years. We're finally excited to take a visit to Laos, so sit back and enjoy some Khao Nio and Lab. Okay, Davago, welcome to the Fox and Burger podcast. Hello, okay. Thanks for having me. Finally, man. Like, uh, I made this point already earlier when we were just chatting, but I think you're basically the only Lao furry that I know in the world. <laughs> at this point, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are very yeah. really rare. Are you rare? Yeah. How how does that make you feel though? Like 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 you're the only Lao furry that at least I know in the whole freaking world. Mm, how do you make I feel? I feel I think it's easy actually. So you don't have to care about anything <laughs> else. You don't have wow. to worry about people know like anything else that you know because you probably <laughs> not know anything. <laughs> <laughs> because bro, yeah, sure, probably sure. I'm not knowing anything, so it's, everything is new for me, so it's easy. Yeah, like you don't have to. Ah, I know you from here, and oh, you have this, you have that. I just skip that topic. Yeah, hmm. that is an interesting way to think about it. Yeah. Well, let's get into the introduction then. Yeah. So tell us about your persona, your handsome persona. Uh, what you do in the fandom, and how you became a furry. Um, my persona actually is not really, it's not really my persona for now. But it's, it's, it's the only one that as close as the first one I can have right now. Uh, so he's like a, an older lion gentleman wearing hats all the time and suit. Yeah, and like smoking because his name is Smoke. Uh, he actually like my uh, original character that I create. Oh, his name first, is Smoke. It, his name is Smoke. Yeah. Oh, so his name yeah. is not the fog. So it's not like you. Yeah, but it's uh, probably the closest thing that I have for first one. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I probably have him as the first one when I get older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say like your voice kind of matches him. Like I'm just listening to you. Like I forgot how you sounded like hearing your voice right now, and I'm looking at your profile. Like wow, this you actually kind of sound like him. <laughs> you mean like Grumpy? Yeah, a, a little bit. Your voice is deeper, uh, which I think is suitable. Very, very nice. Uh, okay. Yeah. My, yeah, it's funny that my English is re- deeper, but when I speak Lao, it's it gets higher. Tone. It gets higher, right? Yeah, because right. of the language. Exactly, dude. When I speak loud, like, like my voice gets higher too. Yeah. Because of the language, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've even noticed that with some friends and coworkers I've had, where their voice changes either higher or lower when they're speaking their a, a different mm-hmm. language, like if it were Mandarin or Thai or something. So yeah, that's that's an interesting thing about language. But can you tell us about any other characters that you have? Uh, that's probably my uh, most no collector, but I have the other like three collectors. So this all these characters like really? they know each other. So yeah, it's this around the same age. They have like um, all their names start with an S because I like cliche. Hmm. <laughs> okay, there's one hmm. tiger, one more white lion, and one uh, leopard. Che- cheetah or leopard? Leopard. Uh, leopard. Gotcha. Yeah, and a cheetah. Okay, so that, that those those are my four original collectors that most people knows about. Yeah. Uh, and about how hmm. I became a furry it, it mm-hmm. is kind of funny. So I know that I'm. What is furry is is like around. Around 2006, when uh, wow. they are up internet actually hitting Laos, right. we actually have internet at home now. So I like werewolf basically before I like fairy. I like fairy before like Lion King or whatever like most people <laughs> do, but we don't yeah, actually yeah. know what it, what this is. Wow. 
because we don't have internet. Mm. So when internet came, I, I like werewolf. I watch werewolf movie a lot. So mm. I just Google werewolf art and I start from there. And I keep searching, mm. searching and I find like a uh, different art. I found more werewolf art and then it's starting <laughs> to become furry because it's similar, right? It's just yeah, so yeah. similar. It was the, those two, yeah. And then I find like uh, Furfinity there. Yeah, those, those are two sites I found. Right. Yeah, the first two sites I found. And then I start uh, finding out about Japanese uh, artists. Because back then, I think Kimono is more popular than fur. I'm not sure, but maybe it's just me. Sure. Yeah, so that's how I hmm. uh, discovered and I became furry. And then I start interaction with the Demon Art community and Furfinity community from there. Yeah. Are, are you still active on Demon Art? No, I only post them for what you call it, uh, like uh, locks. No, what do you call it? Collection gallery. Oh right, right. Like like Public when you're looking. Gallery. Yeah, yeah. When mm. you're looking at photos and you put them in like a folder or something like that, like a collection. Yeah, because it's easier with, and it, you can always come back and show people there. Right. Like Twitter, you know that it's always gonna pile up each other on Twitter. It's not good for backlog. Yeah. That's what I call yeah backlog. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you actually have a similar backstory to one of our previous guests from Vietnam, actually. Oh. Uh, I think it was, yeah, yeah, it was Kusu. So Kusu also mentioned that when he, I think it was when he was first browsing the internet in his home country, when the internet came to Vietnam, that's when he figured out what furry was as well. But through, also through like videos of Disneyland, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was a similar time as well? Um, it would have been a, a few years later, but it's still the same timeline of around the 2000s, late 2000s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we kind of already like jumped into our section two about, you know, the guest spotlight, but so let's, let's keep going with that. So our first question here is Defago, what inspired you to make art in the first place though? Why did you want to be an artist? It started as, you know, I grew up, I lived drawing since what, since I picked up pencil. Mm -hmm. My mom always had me one notebook for drawing or whatever. Oh, we, wow. we call it, we call it not drawing book. It's like, uh, if you translate it, it will be uh, draw and fun. It's like you, you just scratch mm -hmm. anything for fun. So that's the book name for it. We have the name for it in Lao. Well, what's the I'm name in sure Lao? If, what's the name in Lao? Uh, it's like a Pum Tam Lin. <laughs> oh yeah, boom, boom is like book with Tamlin is like to play, Tamlin is like, yeah, to play. To yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always have that one book. My my parents always have that one book for me. Or oh. since I start, yeah. Were Were you the kind in, of person who would always like draw in class, like 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 sketch things on your notebook or something? Yeah, it's some kind of drawing, but it's not really neat drawing. It's like yeah, literally just sketching something random, stick man or whatever drawing. <laughs> um, sure, sure. Yeah, it, it, it's not good. <laughs> but then we have the, like a uh, drawing class in mm -hmm. since uh, elementary school and then to mid, not high school. What what is before high school? Uh, junior uh, high. Junior high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still have that drawing class class. So I always do well in dra drawing class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's how I know that I can draw. Big surprise. You always do well in <laughs> drawing class. Big surprise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your art yeah, is yeah. good. Like, if we hadn't said that yet, like, if no one's ever said it, like, yeah, but here, art, this guy's art is good. I have it open on another tab right now. I'm just kind of like scrolling occasionally, but yeah, your art's pretty good, man. Mm, that's, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. I think it's all right. It's not like top tier, but I, I know what I'm good at. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, more like a graphic design than a drawing artist. Oh, so really? I kind of mix, mix the two together. Sure, sure. Yeah, so that's how I became an artist because I like to draw. Then because of when digital art happened, mm -hmm. like we start to have drawing tab tablet. Before yeah. that, I draw with a mouse. <laughs> right, right. I draw with a mouse on a flat player because it's a vector art, right? It will smooth out your line a bit. It look nicer. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I start drawing with a flat player. Yeah, that's one how I start digital art, and then I start getting my uh, first uh, bamboo Wacom bamboo. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, yeah, 2008. Yeah. I think I got it around 2008. That's that's when I start drawing for real. But but at first I start as a coloring artist. I I color the art of you know Cheetah Paws. Yep. Singaporean. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I, that's how mm -hmm. I start. Yeah, I I coloring. I ask people for permission for coloring. I can I color this your artwork and I start from color. And then when I get my tablet and I start drawing my own art. Yeah, that's how I start. 
Yeah, I, actually, whenever I have an idea for an OC, uh, I will see if I can find a set of line art that's free to use and then try to color that in. And I definitely have quite a few neat characters just from doing that. Uh, I haven't actually asked anyone for permission to use their line art before. That's that's interesting. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. At first, I, I didn't ask for permission until someone asked me I should ask them. I asked. I luckily, they right. said, okay. Right. Because mm. if they're not okay, I, I can just, they told me I can, I should delete it. But that luckily, yeah. Sheila, Sheila Paul is okay. So that's how I, I knew mm -hmm. him. Oh, oh yeah. No wonder he knows you. I think he knows you. Yeah, we met, we met later, so long later, like yeah, 2010, yeah. no, 12, so late. But he knew, when, he knew that I call his art for so long, yeah, since high school. He told me like, ah, oh, I can't even remember. It might have been, I was talking to him on Discord either a year ago or IRL. And he's like, hey, do you know, do you know Defago? He's like, he's like the one Lao Furry I know. I was like, yeah, I, I, I met him at Tide Tales. I forgot to mention, I, I, I've known Defago since like 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's how we met. We met at the mall. Remember, remember, like they were done with playing like, laser tag, and then we met you and like Ning, you Ning, and then like Tail was yeah. there. I forgot what we did. Didn't we eat like dinner at the food court? I forget. We went to no. Mall. We went to that anime place, the, the big one with so many things, but I don't know what to get. We went in there. Wait, really? In MBK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the MBK. Damn, you remember that? Okay. Yeah. I'm je I'm jealous then, because your 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 tie is better than my tie. Your Lao is also better than my Lao. <laughs> even you know, you know, even That's Gao says that. Gao actually says that he told me like, oh yeah, when you speak Thai, you actually sound like a Thai person. That's the perk of uh, Lao Lao's people exactly. because we exactly. yeah, because we grew up with Thai media, so every yeah. I think ninety percent of Laos can speak Thai easily. I think so. Yeah, when I go to Thailand, I my Lao is not so great in the first place, but when I go to Thailand, I think I can understand about thirty to forty percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, I need to work on my tie though. That, that I, I do want to work on. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. If you know Lao, it's so much easier to speak yeah, Thai because what, the, yeah. the, the, the voice is not up and down so much in Thai, but mm -hmm. in Lao is so hard. It's like, there, there are a lot of, uh, yeah. cognates. There are a lot, some of the words are the same. Also yes. the grammar is the same. The grammar is basically mm -hmm. the same. Yeah, but um, I, I wanted to talk about your Twitter. Um, you seem to draw a lot of a feline dads. Uh, you have a little bit over two two K followers on Twitter. You draw a lot of feline dads. You've got this like Phil Noir looking um, OC. But is there a particular reason why you like this like aesthetic though, like like Phil Noir? Uh, I kind of like uh, suit before I yeah. discover what is Phil Noir. Mm -hmm. I kind of like suit. I put hats on cats. That's how I draw. I start drawing. <laughs> I put hats on cats. Like hats on cats. And then I learned that suit is going well with hats. So yeah. Then the later I actually, uh, when I start drawing film noir is because of black sad. I discover with black yeah. sad. Yeah. I was. I wanted to say that. I wanted to say black sad. It's like you. I. This guy has to know what black sad is. Yes. Yes. I think I discovered it way late. Like after they released the third volume. Mm -hmm. That's how I dis discover black sad. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I, the the art, the ink, and everything, it just yeah. move on, the, especially the style of it. Mm -hmm. Then I start drawing like similar style, and people like it so much. <laughs> yeah, people like it so much. So yeah, I just, I just noticed that, okay, this is what I like, and I enjoy drawing. People enjoy watching it. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, I start from there. Uh, but about the feel like that is, I kind of learned toward major audience. I like major drawing older people as well. Yeah. So, so the, the, yeah, that's, that's, that's the only reason. <laughs> and I know, you know, it's kind of fun. You draw all the Ringo or the eye back or whatever. I don't, I'm not sure people know this, but that's what, that's what I enjoy. You kind of have more detail on older people rather compared to the younger one. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, I hope that's answered your question. You, yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's great. So it seems like you have something in common with Michael and that you both like suits. Yep. We have a few yeah. things in common. I mean, like he's actually Lao, I'm Lao American, and then we both like suits. Yeah. I became attracted to your work partly because I love wearing suits. Well, back in the day, I wore suits, but my fursona does wear a suit without the coat on, though. It's a suit without the coat, but I like ties okay. a lot. So it's like yeah. a casual formal? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's that's a great that's a great word. Like um, smart casual. Oh, smart casual. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Casual form. Yeah. So we've been talking about your particular style and your certain unique things that you like to include in a lot of your art, but can you tell us more about 
what influenced you to make that kind of art, specifically any sort of art senpais or, or people you really look up to that inspired you to create the art the way you make it now? So what inspired me, I already said Black Sad, so that's uh, that's one. But the other one that heavily inspired me because of you, I'm not sure you know about Lack a Daisy. Lack a Daisy, yeah, yeah. Lack a Daisy, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, from Tracy, yes. Yeah. So I discovered her comics. I read it since she, she started drawing it on DeviantArt. I like that, yeah, she always have like what you, sepia tone and, and, yeah, her, sepia tone. and her drawing on the own age. She looked like, you know, it's... Kind of similar for uh, smart casual formal and she draw it so well like even her art looked like a cartoonist but it's not it's so detailed mm -hmm. yeah so so she is now the my uh heavy influence on yeah, my style i can see that yeah i can see <laughs> that yeah like a daisy have you ever reached yes. out to her oh i met her on uh what what in australian cons the uh, one Ferdue, in Ferdue, Gold Ferdue. Coast. yeah Ferdue. 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 Oh. I, met her. I saw you uh, yeah you went to the do i saw you uh, i went I saw you yeah picture. i and yeah, then, I went like, there just just to meet her. <laughs> and then, like, didn't you meet like Gao? And then wasn't you also met uh, Ernest, right? Didn't you meet Ernest and Clara? Yeah. Who now lives in Singapore, I think. Ernest, who lives in Sing yeah. Shout out to those guys. Um. And then, like, you also saw Holud, right? Did you see Holud? Oh, yeah, yes, I knew yeah, yeah, him yeah, yeah, since yeah. Uh, Ferrum, yeah. Because, because the mm -hmm. can we flash that picture? Like, I'll find it. Like the picture of everyone holding the flags. We need to flash that picture. Oh, uh, they went on the beach. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and you're the only that like I bet you ninety percent of the people <laughs> did not know your flag. I bet you ninety percent could not could not know your flag. Yeah, that's what every Lao people have to live on. I hate. Where that. you from, <laughs> Lao? Yeah. Where? Are you mm. Chinese or Japanese? No, we come from Laos, right? We're <laughs> king of the hill. Yeah, because I lived in Texas. I lived in Texas, so I oh, actually yeah. experienced that. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, every Lao have to know how to explain where Lao is. We yeah. just below China, next to Vietnam, <laughs> above Thailand. Yeah. yeah, next to Thailand, but not Thailand, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you are Thailand? No, it's above no. Thailand. <laughs> uh, okay yeah yeah that's so so the other yeah heavily inspired is, uh, from Tracy. I met her yeah. God bless me. I I'm so glad I met her. We had oh. we met on the the other ten ones, and we met on the breakfast ones. Yeah. Oh, that's she's nice. really nice. She's really nice. Yeah, and she answered a lot of my questions. Mm -hmm. I hope she, I'm not fanning boy her too so much. Send her this uh, interview <laughs> afterwards. I hope. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure she would enjoy listening to this. But I have a, a lot of sent by not really uh, influence my style, but yeah, I I kind of. She's a poet's one. He yep. actually, yeah, yep. inspired me a lot in terms of like he's close to me, Singaporean. He do his art so awesome. And then the other one that I I like is I'm not sure you know Alecto Fencer. I'm not sure. Yeah, hmm. she, I think she draw art, but she always draw most of her art created from the music that she listening to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I like the way she did she does that because I I also like listening to music that's similar to what I'm drawing. Like you should listen to something that you, the theme is you drawing and it will help you uh, create with you, you know? I've, I've heard about that before. That's a really great way to bring out some good art pieces. And speaking of art pieces, do you have any art pieces that you've personally made that you would say is like your favorite thing that you ever created? Uh, I have two. The one is I, the one I draw with complex scene with uh, Mr. Smoke and Red Umbrella everything is in the raining scene. I'm not sure you know, you, you've seen that? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, actually it's in my, uh, I think it's my Twitter cover. Yeah, it's one of the very complex one that I like. I can send you a link. Sure, sure. Yes, please. Oh. Yeah, yeah it, it, I, I like that. That's good. Because I like rain. I, I like enjoy drawing when raining, so I, I'm not sure you might know this, but I draw a lot when it's raining, but I'm not drawing it always not. <laughs> I like how you understand photography because you also blurred out certain elements, just like an actual camera. Like it's not all in focus, so you have depth of field. You also have reflections on the ground, like a camera has bokeh. Yeah, yeah. You blurred out a little bit of the background. I think that's really cool. Yeah. It says also in the description, it took you four days to make this. Wow. Yeah, because it's so complex. I have to draw the background, the characters. I have to draw the the reflection. <laughs> yeah, it's very mm -hmm. complex, but I, uh, but I, I don't think people like it so much. But I'm enjoying it so much. That's my personal favorite. And the other one is the one I draw in like a film noir poster. Mm -hmm. I actually have poster of this in my room. 
And if anyone interested, please, please, please ask me to buy, uh, buy in from me. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this is the second one. This is my two favorite. Yes. This one actually, it, it got the Daily Deviant on DeviantArt. Wow. That's why I'm happy with it. Yeah, I can see why that is very spectacular. That looks like an actual movie poster. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I kind of like it because, um, in, in my opinion, my style is more pop up on this, like direct mm. light and symbol. I, I don't know. I, I prefer, I think my, I like my style this, this more. You might notice that my style kind of changed from piece to piece quite a bit because I keep experimenting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like the, the style of coloring and everything, but yeah, I yeah. think but you do. Yeah. Also, yeah. Your style has changed over time. Mm -hmm. I've noticed. Yeah. I think it's always good when an artist is willing to change and experiment if that leads to a great product afterwards. And that goes for any kind of artist and some like musicians and painters and sketch artists, any, any kind of medium where you can create something and do it in a way that's more experimental. I think that's always great, and that's one of the ways that you can change and influence the medium if it gets big enough and it, it becomes uh, inspirational enough for other people to see. I, I had a mm -hmm. question here that I'll just mix it and combine it into one question. Uh, are your commissions open? Sorry, I mean I mean to say it like that. Are your commissions open, uh, Defago? Uh, for right now, I am not. My commission is not like it's not always open. It's kind of like if you want to have any idea you want to offer me, you just. Uh, write down your idea. If I feeling like doing it, I'll doing it. Wow. That's, that's how my commission works mostly. Yeah. Are you saying that like anyone can send you a message with their idea and if you accept it, then, then you'll talk about like prices. Yeah. But the price always similar, the same. I have kind of have price, but I just not always open because I, I try to get commission like randomly before I'm, I'm not, I'm not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying drawing what I'm not enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I just know it's that and I just, oh, I shouldn't do this. Is that good for me? Is I feel bad for the commissioner as well. If it's not right. turning out great, even though they say it's great, but in my opinion, it's not. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I kind of change how I get commission. But how are your prices like though? Like that, that was really like the heart of my question. It's just like, you know, what would be like a normal uh, or like average cost if that's possible to ask? It's around $50. $50. So USD, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's around hey, that's that. a lot of money for a lot of people, don't you think? <laughs> that, <laughs> not it, anymore. It had, oh, not anymore. Oh, not yeah. anymore. Inflation. Sorry. The last time I went to Laos was like 2006, and I remember everything was cheap, just like Thailand. <laughs> but cheaper oh yeah, than Thailand, six. Right? Yeah, six. Two, uh, I, I think I think things have changed though since 2006. I think a lot of things have changed, right? Yeah, so much. Yeah, it's changed a lot since uh, 2010. The skip abruptly changing. Yeah. So yeah, that's my, that's my price. And if you have any idea that's suitable, you can reach out to me. I, you you uh, should have told me that. I reach. wanted a commission. I, you should have told me that like like five years ago or like in <laughs> yeah. like two years ago. All right, it's all right, bit, Yeah, it's a bit hard with, with my work now. Um, my work is a yeah. bit more busy, so I'm not promised a uh, fast turnaround. <laughs> all right, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It's more about quality rather than quantity. Thank you. I hope I have mm -hmm. quality. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I guess you're able to make a decent living as just an artist. Is that correct? Uh, if I, I'm, I'm not really doing just an artist, but if I want to, it, it, yeah, it, it's quite decent living. Yeah, well, well yeah, because okay. Defago has a full-time job. You have another job, right? You have a full-time job. I have one full-time job. I have two part-time jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I wonder you're busy. Yeah. Um, so then if you were to pursue a career in art and just do that all the time, how do you think people would view that? Like, do people in Lao hold artists in high esteem? It's also, it's Laos, by the way, it's Laos. Yeah, it's Sorry. Laos. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, if I work at an artist for like drawing cartoon or whatever, just, just for Lao market, it will be very hard because we don't have really big market for that. But if I do just like commission for furry stuff as I think it's quite what you call feasible, but in terms of are they, do they real a lot artists as like high esteem? I don't think, no, not yet. At first we don't have digital art school or whatever. Not a lot mm -hmm. of art is not publicly understandable. I'm not sure I'll say it correctly. Like mm -hmm. people don't really know all the type of art just yet. Now we, mm -hmm. uh, people here, they only know like contemporary art, drawing with uh, 
uh, brush uh, with color and all that, they don't really know what art can be more than that. For example, like 3D art, uh, collector art, concept art, we don't have that. We don't have that here. You cannot make a living out of that here. It's, yeah, that's why people kind of not know what art this is, apart from what they know. So mm -hmm. it, it's hard, yeah, so it's hard. So if you do art for a living, it's more likely like people would think like, uh, you have nothing to eat. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Yeah, but I'm sure if if I do just open commission, I can. Yeah, I can make a living out of that easily. Yeah, you seem yeah. popular enough for that to to be a reality. But then also, I I also kind of feel that because the cost of living in Laos is like cheaper than America or Western countries, you might be able to like if you earn if you charge like American prices, but you live in a cheap country, then you might be the one winning, right? Yes. I mean, yes, I, I yes, know we have obviously. inflation, but yeah, like if you charge like western quote-unquote american prices which are fairly high but your cost of living is low then it's probably easier to make a living off of art yeah a, a lot of uh artist friend also recommend me about this as well i say he said then you can shoot it to that it's a win-win for you yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people point it out as well for me yeah sure we just have one last question for this section before we uh move on to the next one and that's um you do you have a uh a best piece of advice for any aspiring Lao furry artists out there, um, if there are any, so what what would that be? Uh, my piece of advice is um, would be like, yeah, if you want to do commission, you want to do art. I mean, if you want to earn for a living, yeah, open for everybody. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people, I I'm not sure if I'm correct, but I just want to point out that a lot of people like in Southeast Asia that they cannot speak English, they yeah. just open commission for local. So that's is not. I mean, for Lao, it's impossible if you just want to open for local. It's yeah. impossible to earn. So you have to open for everybody. Then it, it's really good. And th that's also mean that you have to know how to uh, make your, your art unique enough for people to like it everywhere as well. Yeah, so yeah, you, you need to please the audience, basically. You have to make mm -hmm. yourself unique. You cannot just draw whatever you like and expect people to commission you. I mean, if it works on long term, but I mean, you, you also have to, yeah, basically make yourself unique, yeah. 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 You, you don't want to be the same guy on that people already have. So yeah, that's, that's my point, yeah. Yeah, great, great. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to add that about what my advice, you should draw when you feel good. I mean, you should draw if you it make you feel good. A lot of artists, new artists, kind of disappoint and let down when they draw and it's not receiving well because they want to draw something to make people like it. You shouldn't do that. You should draw when you like to draw it. That's you. You should be your main point of drawing. You should enjoy drawing, and then it doesn't yeah. matter if people like it or not, as long as you're enjoying. It's like you're playing sport, football, or whatever. You enjoy playing football. It doesn't matter if you losing or winning. So that, that yeah, yeah, that's what that's my. I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. by, because that's why, it's, because even now digital art is even more accessible. There's going to be a lot of people always better than you, always have more like, and you always have more uh, traction and on your art or whatever. So you shouldn't look at that. You're never going to be the number one. Only one guy can be a number one in anything. If your point, uh, your point of view, your mindset is like that, you're not going to go very far on everything. So yeah, do what you enjoy. You should do it when you enjoy it. And I think it's the struggle of any sort of artist to to find a way to straddle between doing what you like and then getting paid to do something uh but it's very achievable you know uh, people have done it before so uh you just need to find where that balance is and enjoy life yes yes that's, life. that's correct yeah that's correct so now we can move on to our section three which is comparing and contrasting fandoms simply put what do you think furry is what does the word mean to you uh, for me yeah i think for is yeah uh anybody who enjoy um uh, tie up anthropomissing art or whatever or dress up as one so yeah if you enjoy like half human half animal thing that's where it is it doesn't matter what tie up is so if you enjoy drawing one uh write a song about one or dressing as one this is my furry is for me yeah <laughs> i hope they explain yeah, I think that's a good ex explanation. Yeah, even even if you're not enjoying creating one, even if you're just enjoying watching one or consume the media, then you are furry, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how I would put it, too. 
How do you explain, though, like the concept of furry to someone who's like not uh, furry, but they're Lao, like a, just like an average Lao person? Like, how would you, you know, like like your mom, I guess, how would you explain that to them? Uh, it's very easy, actually, for us because they don't know what furry is. Nobody <laughs> knows what furry is in Laos unless you are in any, uh, what do you call it? Uh, anime? Anime yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. circle or art circle. You, they might know what furry is, but outside of that, no, no one has any idea. So. So how I explain it is just very simple. You like people with animal head. That's it. <laughs> how, how do you say that, Lao? How do you? I'm curious. Uh, what sat? <laughs> what was sat? Sat? What is sat? Sat mean animal. Animals. Oh, yeah. Sat, sat is animal. Yeah. Khun so, so the person with yeah, the animal so head. Just, yeah. So basically, you like people with animal head dressing up or whatever, living <laughs> like human. That's that's a very easy to explain for 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 me. <laughs> And they and they understand it. Like if you say that, they, they understand, understand it. They, they, uh, and then if you don't, they don't really understand. You just point out that all oh, the animation or whatever, all the cartoon yeah. that we watch, and basically that. So they oh, so is that oh, okay? Okay, that's it. Because they, they mm-hmm. gotcha. I'm sure they understand that there's people who are creating it. They they must enjoying it, right? So yeah, mm-hmm. so so we are just similar to them. So have you actually told your parents or the rest of your family that you are a furry? And if you have, what do they think? Uh, actually, I don't really tell them that what furry is or what I am furry. I just tell them that what I like, and I have the art, you know, the furry art or whatever or animal art. I'm sure they know that I like animal because I've been raising animals since I was a kid. I always hmm. have some kind of animal: bird, rabbit, dog, cat. Now I have beard dragon sleeping. Me, he's just sleeping next to me right now. <laughs> so yeah, they they know that I like animals and I like animal as art. Any type of animal. So yeah, I I didn't really hide, but I never explained what fur is for them. But they know what I like. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's answer. I think that's a good answer. Yeah. I don't really, but but my friend kind of curious as well because my friend know I have a fur suit. My and my normal friends, I mean. Oh I even, wait, yeah, you do have a fur suit. Yeah, I just said that. So it's project suit. Yeah. No so they know that I have one. I sometimes wearing as a party or video <laughs> call just for fun. That's funny. Yeah, so they know that that is a thing, uh, but they don't really know up, apart from that. I mean, in, in a deeper side, what it actually how huge it is, they they don't really know. But they know I I went to some fur con as well. So they ask, what why are you going there? Like I just <laughs> go. That's just that's like a convention. Like people like me who like this kind of art. Like yeah, because you spend a lot of money to go there. Like if you go to Australia, that's a lot of money. That's very far. Uh, it's okay, but it's not. Too high because I booked like far long, long before the con. No wonder, no wonder. Yeah, I booked like six mm-hmm. months, <laughs> six months ahead of the time. Don't you have to transfer at Singapore? I transfer at Malaysia, yeah. K uh, KL, yeah. KL, yeah. yeah. KL, yeah. That's a that's a cool airport. But the visa is so easy. You just apply in the email. I I apply today. I get it two day afterward. It's it's quite easy. It's it's not so too expensive. Yeah, also really is. A lot easier than than Europe and uh, USA, for sure. Mm. So we have another question. Actually, you you mentioned before that it's rare to have uh, Lao furries, but do you know how many of them are actually in Laos? Like, how many Laotian furries are there? Uh, I think I know the one I know and add me on Facebook. I think it's eight, <laughs> around eight. That's, that's what that's what I know. I th- but I think the the younger furry probably know more. Because uh, mm. the furry here is kind of demographic. It's a, a lot younger than me. I'm probably the the only, what you call it, baby boomer. No, boomer furry in Laos. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say you're the only you're, boomer furry. Okay. Yeah, you're on probably, the, you're, you're, yeah. you're definitely like one of the earliest, if not the earliest Lao furry who joined the Lao furry fandom, I feel. Because like, yeah. re- I really don't know anyone else like who's in the fandom, but older than you. Because you're the only Lao, you're literally the only Lao furry I know. Yeah, I'm pretty like ninety nine percent sure. Probably, I'm the first. So I, you're, I know you're, like, I, uh, hey, you're the granddaddy, man. You're like you're you're the actual like granddaddy of the Lao Furry fandom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I met two of them among the eight of them. I met two of them. One of them I met him many times. I think he's at university now, almost graduate. He also lives in the capital of Vieng Vieng Chan, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's a bit outside of the the city. It's a bit oh, okay. yeah. I, I knew him because he he used to be in one of the forum on Laos, like Webboard. You don't remember Webboard? <laughs> yeah, it was long ago, and and he kind of know my art, and 
after a while, I met him and I bought some stuff from convention as, for him as well because he asked me to buy it for him. So yeah, I met him a, a few times. But the other one we just shared on Facebook, we never met. Mm -hmm. And the rest is, no, we just have add friend on Facebook. I never know who they are or met them. Yeah, but I think it's around that. I'm not sure. There are probably more that I don't know of because, yeah, the younger furry probably know one of the younger furry. They don't, probably don't want to yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. The boomer furry like me. <laughs> I think you're cool, though, man. Like, like it's their loss. But, I mean, I, I think you're an amazing guy. So, hopefully, there's more social interaction in the future for the Lao furries. Yeah, there really aren't, like, a lot of Lao furries as far as, as, as I know, just as we said. So... Um, I don't really see them a lot at fur cons when I was traveling back in, what was it, like 2017 to 2019. And I, I came across you once in Thailand. I didn't see you at Furum, though. I didn't see you at JMOF or Furum. I'm guessing you were busy on those occasions. But I didn't go to Furdu, that's why. Uh, when was Furdu? 2018 for you? 18, yeah. I think 18. Yeah. yeah. I didn't go there. I didn't go. There's too far from me. I think I went to like Malaysia. I went to Philippines and then Japan. And so, like, I think that was, like, enough for my schedule. But, um, yeah, like, I don't really see a lot of Lao furries going to, like, overseas cons. And I just had a question, like, like why is that? Do you think it's, like, the cost of, like, the expenses that they would have to pay or? Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's similar to what you, you just guessed. But because of what I said on the previous case question, that because the demographic is so young, so it's not affordable for them yet. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they probably go more when they got older because yeah they have jobs they have more money to spare or something like that mm -hmm. so i think that's the main reason why you don't really see them and yeah I mean, it, there's not many of us so yeah it's obvious that you won't buy any <laughs> yeah so so let me ask a follow-up question because like like is there like a facebook group or like a telegram group for lao furries then uh there's none that i know of <laughs> why, why don't you why don't you make one why don't, why i don't tried you make to one? make one but they are too shy you know there's too oh, young come on. Oh, and there's like oh, all, all this all feeling. this one uncle uncle want to add them on a telegram no it's weird <laughs> mm. so yeah i try to organize like a meetup uh sometime but it, it, it's hard because one is they still too young maybe it's hard for them to traveling around with vehicle or whatever but i think it's what happened when they got older when they yeah. are all in university, it will be easier, yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the main reason is because they're young. If yeah, they got yeah. older, they probably travel more, like me. I offered them, like, you want to go with me as well? I can be a guy or whatever to yeah. the con. Uh, basically, uh, especially in Thailand, because easy, so easy was to travel there. Yeah, but they said no. Yeah, still hard for them. <laughs> still too hard for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I, I mean, we just have to understand that it, their income is much lower. Yeah, I mean, I mean this is Lao, the, the, the Lao salary, yeah. Um, but then also, like, if they're still students, then they probably don't have steady income. Like, they're probably studying. Yeah, and they're busy at study as well, yeah. It, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Life is hard. <laughs> Life is hard. So are you talking about uh, people below maybe, like, 14 to 17 years old then? Yes, yes, correct. Around okay. that. Yeah. Damn, that's a like real new generation. That's the actual like, new generation. That's not, like, in their 20s, man. <laughs> that's not even <laughs> college age. It's um yeah. Are you going? Are you going to firm though? Firm this year? No, no. I I don't feel like travel yet. I think it's still hard. Right. I mean, I I don't wanna you know when I go there and I encounter unexpected somewhere in uh, the airport. I hate airport. Yeah, yeah. I like traveling, but I hate airport. I hate it. Yeah, so I don't much. like airport. I don't like airports. Man. You have to queue to get in. You have to queue yeah. to do this, and you have to mm -hmm. queue I, again mm -hmm. to get in the plane. You have to queue to get out. <laughs> It's I so remember, I remember, like in certain in the certain Thai airports, I, I I'm not sure about for Laos, but in certain Thai airports, I forgot I forgot which one, I forgot which one, but you have to take a bus to the airplane, like the yes, airplane does yes. not connect to the terminal, right? Like yes, Don Muen, yes, correct. Mm, yeah, Don Muen. I went there one time. I was like, what the fuck is this? And then I was like, I got used to it. I'm fine. I'm fine. Like they just, they, you know, they, they have like several buses and they took us to the plane. But I was like, wow. It's not, yeah, it's not a long queue, but it's, yeah, you still have to wait a yeah. bit. So a, a lot of wait, a little wait, yeah. a little wait is a bit annoying. Yeah. I don't like that part yeah. of uh, traveling. And mm -hmm. yeah, especially what happened in the world. And I, I expect the queue will be even more. So yeah, that's why I don't feel like traveling. Yeah. Yet. Next year, most maybe. But I, yeah, I mean, next year. Yeah, please, I've been to a lot of uh, Thai Tail and Furum. I missed two yeah, Furum, yeah. including this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
check out them yet. Anyway, um, the last question is, uh, uh, judging from our conversations right now, I, I, I feel that the Lao Furry fandom is definitely, like, young, and it's definitely small. Um, and it might even be smaller than the Vietnamese furry fandom, from what I'm gathering. But, like, what do you think will happen in, let's say, like, the next five years, or perhaps even, like, ten years? Like, do you think there is room for growth? Like, do you think that there's going to be enough people joining that you might see, like, a, at least, like, a like a yearly meetup or even a fur con? But what, what, what are your thoughts on that? My opinion is it's going to get bigger, like, everywhere else, because internet is more accessible cheaper is so cheap now it's faster so mm -hmm. uh, yeah when people have more access to whatever they like they probably find out more what they like so it, it will grow in numbers because of right. the accessibility of the internet yeah and then this uh, first generation of furry will become kind of like what the 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 main the leader and then mm -hmm. the ge new generation will come so it's kind of connect each other so i would say it will get more and more and the reason why the young uh, furry is so younger now because of Internet is just start to get in. I yeah. I got in first because I have the di die up internet. People right. probably don't have many die up back then because it's so hard to get. And then we can decide to have to ADSL. I always have internet since die up era. You know the beep beep boop boop. No one so that's right. Yeah. So so with yeah uh, that's why and a lot of people don't have that. I mean didn't have that, but now they have kind of have ADSL era. So they starting to have that at home. They yep. start to get into the fandom. So that's why this generation is so young. So the next one will, yeah, there will be more. It's so mm -hmm. accessible now. And lead up to meetup, probably. Meetup is most likely. If we had, you have like, what, 10 people who want to meet, it's easy, yeah. Ten. Can you please invite me? I want to go to the meetup. I want to go to the meetup. Oh, sure, sure, if it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it happens. Maybe I... next five years, possibly, yeah. Because yeah, I, yeah. I know this, like, the past three years, there's a lot of new. Mm -hmm. If you actually have a meet, I want to go because I haven't been to Laos since, like, 13 years ago. Oh, it's so like, different lot, I, think, I, I think a lot has changed, man. I think, I think like, I think the prices have gone up. I think, bit, I think yeah. things are more expensive. Yeah. Every, I, re, I remember Thai bot used to be 40 Thai bot to one USD. And now it's like 30 Thai bot to one USD, which is the same as NTD, by the way, it's roughly 30 NTD to one USD. So the Thai yeah. currency got stronger. Oh, oh, it's similar. Thai bot okay. used to be 40 to one. It used to be 40 to one. Now it's 30 to one. So that means that the Thai currency got stronger. Uh, for for the Laufery, I probably don't know them all because they are kind of mm -hmm. younger. And I know this a lot of them kind of <laughs> involved more in the Thai furry community, the younger one yeah, as well. Yeah. So they probably know more in that in that group of people. I I'm sure yeah. there's a lot more there that I don't know of because I don't really interact with uh, the Thai furry group that quite young as well. I, I I interact with yeah around my age or a bit younger like Paula, like Gao. Yeah, like uh, Kiyoshi. Yeah. Kiyoshi. Yeah, so that era is more related to me. But there's a group of younger Thai furry that interact with Lao, uh, young furry as well. So I'm sure there's a lot more. For FurryCon, as um, not unlikely, but, I mean, unlikely for now. Mm -hmm. Probably it can happen because we have a lot of anime uh, convention yearly now. Oh, nice. Sometimes twice yearly. And FurryCon is, it can easily be like similar to that. I mean, it's. Uh, can organize in similar format as anime convention and it can even maybe organize kind of mixed with the I mean part of the anime convention as well but I'm not sure if that's a good idea but yeah sure. that's sure, sure, that sure. can also be uh, one of the way to do it that that is one way uh, hopefully and I think we said something similar in the previous episode with the Vietnamese furries hopefully one day we will see more furries sort of flourish out and and expand but I'm sure Vietnamese fur fandom is a lot bigger, right? It feels a lot bigger, dude. Even on Twitter, on Twitter, I'm seeing more and more Vietnamese flags. But like, I've I've never seen a Lao flag for a furry account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't they don't probably don't use Twitter much. People don't use Twitter much here. They use Facebook. Yeah. So you have to find yeah, 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 Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully there will be more of that though, whether it's on Facebook or any other uh, website. Speaking of websites like Facebook and Twitter, right now you can go ahead and do a social media shout out. Basically, just tell us where people can find you on the internet through social media. Uh, I'm very easy to, to find on the internet. It's basically go everywhere. Same name, mm -hmm. same ad everywhere. So uh, if you want to see more art or me, like sketch or whatever, random art, it's probably better to follow me on Twitter. It's at Defago. D-E-F-A-G-O. D-E-F. 
A G O S. Mm-hmm. And if you want to follow like a more organized gallery of me, it's probably for affinity and even art is a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't post like, you know, something is not worth posting. I don't really like posting on those two. So I just post on Twitter for more random stuff. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. scribble uh, or like, whatever. Like, like, like pictures of your dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you actually <laughs> call him your dragon? Like, do you actually say that? No, I have a name for him. Him is it's it's Dante. 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 You know Dante, the the red, the will make cry. Oh, Dante. Oh, Dante. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because he's red. Yeah, that's why. Oh, devil may right, cry. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. We'll flash a picture of Dante. Yeah, either the character or the dragon. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let's let's have them side by side. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> let's have them side by. Side. Yes, good idea. Uh, mm-hmm. And then put him mm-hmm. uh, like a what the. Uh, the know the sword rebellion on the back oh, of yeah. my dragon <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i'll see what i can do uh but you know what thank you so much for being with us tonight uh we're sharing more about uh the lao furry fandom about art about everything that you've said so far i think you've been a great guest so far thank you for being with us tonight thank you so much Duke. again you're literally the only lao furry i know and you speak english extremely well I almost fear that like we may have to ask you again to come back on the show just to talk more because like oh my gosh there's a lot to talk about but thank you <laughs> okay. so far yeah yeah thank, thank you, you for so having much. me um um it's, it's a pleasure to talk to any uh furry or and uh, interact with furry comedy um I'm, yep. I'm okay and i'm i'm used to uh public speaking so i'm not uh, I, i'm, I'm yeah. always open yeah 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 um, you, you, you seem like it. yeah you seem really experienced yeah Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not. Yeah, it's kind of experience. I'm not sure. I just don't have the you know the state flight or whatever. I I'm not. I never have that. So I don't know. I can't wow. really relate to that. So that's why I'm. I can speak. Yeah. That's yes. pretty special. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. This has been another episode of the Fox and Burger podcast with me, Burger, and I'm Michael the Matcha Fox. And audience, we will see you later on the next episode. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Peace.